Today we'll be working on a Ream Prestige. Bottom of the unit has incoming gas line. Water main with main shut off coming in, going past an isolation port, going past the filter into the unit, going through the heat exchanger, coming back out as hot water, going past another isolation valve, and into the house. In addition, we have the remote connection to the head. We have power coming in. In this case, it's a plug. It may be directly wired into a circuit. Uh, we also have a temperature and pressure overflow valve that discharges to the outdoors. And finally, condensation line that also goes outdoors. The ream lime and flushing procedure calls for isolation valves. These don't come with the unit. These are extra, but worth every cent. What we're going to do is we're going to isolate the cold water from going into the unit and then using this port here to bring in the cleaning solution. And then likewise, we're going to prevent the, the solution from going into the house by closing off this back valve, opening this valve, which will allow the solution to come back out. Items that you will need, four to five gallons of white distilled cooking grade vinegar, a bucket that holds at least four to five gallons, a circulating pump, in my case it's a submersible, and hoses to get in and out of the unit. In this case we will need a five eighths by six feet in length. It'll be a female to male and also female to female. You may also need some towels or an additional bucket and a pair of pliers to maybe persuade the valves to open or to take off the filter. First thing we do is turn off the power but we don't do it by pressing this switch. Instead, we cut off the electricity by either pulling the plug or turning off the circuit. The reason for turning off the circuit or unplugging the unit is to prevent the valves internally from closing and bypassing the heat exchanger. Also, as a safety precaution, we're going to turn off the gas and close water to the unit from the main. In my case, I have three gallons of the white distilled vinegar into the bucket. I have a submersible pump in there, but you don't have to use a submersible pump. You just need a pump. And so now we're going to go to the isolation valves and we're going to turn off the valve that would allow the cold water into the unit. And we're going to do the same thing over on the hot water side. This, this one may be a little bit sticky, but no, oh, it turned. Now we're going to remove this cap and attach the hose coming from the pump. On the hot water side, we're going to remove this cap and attach the hose that goes back to the pail. You can see there's a little bit of dripping as I take the cap off the cold water side. And then we attach the line that's coming from the pump because this is where the solution is going to go into the system. Now, we're going to open the valve to allow the solution to come in and go up into the unit. Over on the hot water side, we take off the cap. Again, there's going to be a little bit of water dripping. Of course, if you have an external unit, you probably don't care if things get wet, but I do have towels to catch it because I have a wife to answer to. So now we're going to attach the hose that returns the solution back to the pail where it gets circulated by the pump. Snug by hand on both sides and now we're going to open the line, the return line, so the solution is going to come out of the unit back down this hose into the pail and then eventually will be sucked up by the pump, fed up the line that feeds the solution back into the unit, 
We'll circulate it like this for about 45 minutes to an hour. Here we are plugging in the pump. There's some air bubbles as the system purges it. And the bubble should stop shortly and now it's just the distilled white vinegar solution circulating through the exchanger coming back out and you'll probably notice some uh, change in color as the sediments are removed from the heat exchanger. So we'll let this run for about 45 to an hour and we'll show you what it looks like. Time to turn off the pump. You can see by looking at the bucket that the solution has changed a little bit in color. Anyway, we've run it for an hour. So now what we do is we close the valve so there's no more solution leaking into the system. And now we're going to turn on the cold water and flush this for about five minutes. In my case, since I don't want the water going back into the bucket, because it's full, and I'm not outside, so I can't just drain it somewhere, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the pressure relief valve, turn on the water by opening the main, and I'm going to allow that water, once I open the inline valve, Now the water is going from the main into the system, flushing through and exiting out through here, which takes it outside. According to Ream, flushing out for five minutes should get all the vinegar out of the system. While the system is flushing out, we're going to disconnect our hoses from the isolation valves, put the caps back on, and dispose of our white vinegar solution. Do not, do not attempt to use this for cooking. It is unsafe. Securing my caps onto the isolation valves. And now we're going to turn off the main so there is no water flowing through the system now. At this point you should take off the filter and clean it of any sediment and impurities that there might be. There's a whole other video on this that I have. Check the link down below and uh, I'll take you step by step on how to do that. With the filter all cleaned out, we simply just reinsert. I'm just screwing this back in. And once it is tight, we can turn on our water. I want to make sure I turn off the temperature pressure valve that's reseated. And now we're going to open the line into the water heater, into the house. And we're going to run some water to purge the system of any air. Once we're satisfied that the system has been purged of any air, we check for any leaks. Everything looks dry. So our next step is to turn on the gas, plug in the unit, or turn on the circuit breaker, go to the remote panel, and turn on the power. Turn on the hot water. Make sure the unit is working, and that you get hot water. Follow these easy steps if you live in an area with hard water, which is most of the United States, and your unit will give you maintenance-free hot water for many, many years to come.